Hi guys, we're going to go ahead and get started on our Charlotte's Web for today. So let me go ahead and get the camera pulled up. If you are reading along with us in a book of your own, we're going to be starting on chapter 14. It's on page 105. And if you don't have the book at home, you can uh, draw a picture or just sit and listen. Um, you know, any of those choices would be great. Make sure you're paying attention because we will be taking a quiz at the end of this too. So make sure that you're paying attention each day. All right. We're going to talk about Dr. Dorian. Dorian, your name's in this book too. The next day was Saturday. Fern stood at the kitchen sink drying the breakfast dishes as her mother washed them. Mrs. Arable worked silently. She hoped Fern would go out and play with other children instead of heading for the Zuckerman's barn to sit and watch animals. Charlotte is the best storyteller I have ever heard, said Fern, poking her dish towel into a cereal bowl. Fern, said her mother sternly, you must not invent things. You know spiders don't tell stories. Spiders can't talk. Charlotte can replied Fern. She doesn't talk very loud, but she talks. What kind of story did she tell? asked Mrs. Arable. Well, began Fern, she told us about a cousin of hers who caught a fish in her web. Don't you think that's fascinating? Fern, dear, how would a fish get in a spider's web? said Mrs. Arable. You know it couldn't happen. You're making this up. Oh, it happened all right, replied Fern. Charlotte never fibs. This cousin of hers built a web across the stream. One day she was hanging around on the web and a tiny fish leaped into the air and got tangled in the web. The fish got, got caught by one fin, mother. Its tail was wildly thrashing and shining in the sun. Can't you just see the web sagging dangerously under the weight of the fish? Charlotte's cousin kept slipping in, dodging out, and she was beaten mercilessly over the head by the wildly thrashing fish, dancing in and dancing out, throwing fern, snapped her mother. Stop it. Stop inventing these wild tales. I'm not inventing, said fern. I'm just telling you the facts. What finally happened? asked her mother, whose curiosity began to get the better of her. Charlotte's cousin won. She wrapped the fish up, and then she ate him when she got good and ready. Spiders have to eat the same as the rest of us. Yes, I suppose they do, said Mrs. Arable vaguely. Charlotte has another cousin who is a balloonist. She stands on her head, lets out a lot of line, and is carried aloft on the wind. Mother, wouldn't you simply love to do that? Yes, I would, come to think of it, replied Mrs. Arable. But Fern, darling, I wish you would play outside. <clears throat> outside today instead of going to Uncle Homer's barn. Find some of your playmates and do something nice outdoors. You're spending too much time in that barn. It isn't good for you to be alone so much. Alone, said Fern. Alone? My best friends are in the barn cellar. It is a very sociable place. Not at all lonely. Fern disappeared after a while, walking down the road toward Zuckerman's. Her mother dusted the, the sitting room. As she worked, she kept thinking about Fern. It didn't seem natural for a little girl to be so interested in animals. Finally, Mrs. Arable made up her mind she would pay a call on old Dr. Dorian and ask his, adv his advice. She got in the car and drove to his office in the village. Dr. Dorian had a thick beard. He was glad to see Mrs. Arable and gave her a comfortable chair. It's about Fern, she explained. Fern spends entirely too much time in the Zuckerman's barn. It doesn't seem normal. She sits on a milk stool in a corner of the barn cellar near the pig pen and watches animals hour after hour. She just sits and listens. Dr. Dorian leaned back and closed his eyes. How enchanting, he said. It must be a real nice it must be real nice and quiet down there. Homer has some sheep, hasn't he? Yes, said Mrs. Zara, but but it all started with that pig. We let Fern raise on a bottle. She calls him Wilbur. Homer bought the pig, and ever since it left our place, Fern has been going to her uncle's to be near it. I have been hearing things about that pig, said Dr. Dorian, opening his eyes. They say he's quite a pig. Have you heard about the words that appeared in the spider's web? asked Mrs. Arable nervously. Yes, replied the doctor. Well, do you understand it? asked Mrs. Arable. Understand what? Do you understand how there could be any writing in a spider's web? Oh, no, said Dr. Dorian. I don't understand it. But for the matter, I don't understand how a spider learned to spin a web in the first place. When the words appeared, everyone said they were a miracle. 
but nobody pointed out that the web itself is a miracle. What's miraculous about a spider's web, said Mrs. Arable. I don't see why you say a web is a miracle. It's just a web. Ever try to spin one, asked Dr. Dorian. Mrs. Arable shifted uneasily in her chair. No, she replied, but I can crochet a doily and I can knit a sock. Sure, said the doctor, but somebody taught you, didn't they? My mother taught me. Well, who taught a spider? A young spider knows how to spin a web without any instruction from anybody. Don't you regard that as a miracle? Oh, I, I suppose I do, said Mrs. Arable. I never looked at it that way before. But still, I don't understand how those words got into the web. I don't understand it, and I don't like what I can't understand. None of us do, said Dr. Dorian, sighing. I'm a doctor. Doctors are supposed to understand everything, but I don't understand everything, and I don't intend to let it worry me. Mrs. Arable fidgeted. Fern says the animals talk to each other. Dr. Dorian, do you believe animals talk? I never heard one say anything, he replied, but that proves nothing. It is quite possible that an animal has spoken civilly to me and that I didn't catch the remark because I wasn't paying attention. Children pay better attention than grown-ups. If Fern says that the animals in Zuckerman's barn talk, I'm quite ready to believe her. Perhaps if people talked less, animals would talk more. People are incessant talkers. I can give you my word on that. Well, I feel better about Fern, said Mrs. Arable. You don't think I need to worry about her? Does she look well, asked the doctor. Oh, yes. Appetite good? Oh, yes, she's always hungry. Sleep well at night? Oh, yes. Then don't worry, said the doctor. Do you think she'll ever start thinking about something besides pigs and sheep and geese and spiders? How old is Fern? She's eight. Well, said Dr. Dorian, I think she will always love animals, but I doubt that she spends her entire life in Homer Zuckerman's barn cellar. How about boys? Does she know any boys? She knows Henry Fussy, said Mrs. Arable brightly. Dr. Dorian closed his eyes again and went into deep thought. Henry Fussy, he mumbled. Hmm, remarkable. Well, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Let Fern associate with her friends in the barn if she wants to. I would say offhand that spiders and pigs were fully as interesting as Henry Fussy. Yet I predict that the day will come when even Henry will drop some chance remark that catches Fern's attention. It's amazing how children change from year to year. How's Avery? He asked, opening his eyes wide. Oh, Avery, chuckled Mrs. Arable. Avery is always fine. Of course, he gets into poison ivy, gets stung by wasps and bees, and brings frogs and snakes home, and breaks everything he lays his hands on. <gasps> He's fine. Good, said the doctor. Mrs. Arable said goodbye and thanked Dr. Dorian very much for his advice. She felt greatly relieved. Chapter 15, The Crickets. We're on page 113. The crickets sang in the grasses. They sang the song of summer's end, a sad, monotonous song. Summer is over and gone, they sang. Over and gone, over and gone. Summer is dying, dying. The crickets felt it was their duty to warn everybody that summertime cannot last forever. Even on the most beautiful days in the whole year, the days when summer is changing into fall, the crickets spread the rumor of sadness and change. Everybody heard the song of the crickets. Avery and Fern Arable heard it as they walked the dusty road. They knew that school would soon begin again. The young geese heard it and knew that they would never be little goslings again. Charlotte heard it and knew that she hadn't much time left. Mrs. Zuckerman, at work in the kitchen, heard the crickets and a sadness came over her too. Another summer gone, she sighed. Lurvy, at work building a crate for Wilbur, heard the song and knew it was time to dig potatoes. Summer is over and gone, repeated the crickets. How many nights till frost, sang the crickets. Goodbye, summer. Goodbye. Goodbye. The sheep heard the crickets, and they felt so uneasy, they broke a hole in the pasture fence and wandered up into the field across the road. The gander discovered the hole and led his family through, and they walked to the orchard and ate the apples that were lying on the ground. A little maple tree in the swamp heard the cricket song, and turned bright red with anxiety. 
Wilburn now was now the center of attraction on the farm. Good food and regular hours were showing results. Wilbur was a pig any man would be proud of. One day, more than a hundred people came to stand at his yard and admire him. Charlotte had written the word radiant, and Wilbur really looked radiant as he stood in the golden sunlight. Ever since the spider had befriended him, he had done his best to live up to his reputation. When Charlotte's web said some pig, Wilbur had tried hard to look like some pig. When Charlotte's web said terrific, Wilbur had tried to look terrific. And now that the web said radiant, he did everything possible to make himself glow. It is not easy to look radiant, but Wilbur threw himself into it with a will. He would turn his head slightly and blink his long eyelashes, and then he would breathe deeply. And when his audience grew bored, he would spring into the air and do a backflip with a half twist. At this, the crowd would yell and cheer. How's that for a pig? Mr. Zuckerman would ask, well pleased with himself. That pig is radiant. Some of Wilbur's friends in the barn worried for fear all this attention would go to his head and make him stuck up. But it never did. Wilbur was modest. Fame did not spoil him. He still worried some about the future, as he could hardly believe that a mere spider would be able to save his life. Sometimes at night he would have a bad dream. He would dream that men were coming to get him with knives and guns, but that was only a dream. In the daytime, Wilbur usually felt happy and confident. No pig ever had true, truer friends, and he realized that friendship is one of the most satisfying things in the world. Even the song of the crickets did not make Wilbur too sad. He knew it was almost time for the county fair, and he was looking forward to the trip. If he could, have, if he could distinguish himself at the fair and maybe win some prize money, he was sure Zuckerman would let him live. Charlotte had worries of her own, but she kept quiet about them. One morning, Wilbur asked her about the fair. You're going with me, aren't you, Charlotte, he said. Well, I don't know, replied Charlotte. The fair comes at a bad time for me. I shall find it inconvenient, inconvenient to leave home even for a few days. Why? asked Wilbur. Oh, I just don't feel like leaving my web. Too much going on around here. Please come with me, begged Wilbur. I need you, Charlotte. I can't stand going to the fair without you. I just, you've just got to come. No, said Charlotte. I believe I'd better stay home and see if I can't get some work done. Well, what kind of work? asked Wilbur. Egg laying. It's time I made an egg sack and filled it with eggs. I didn't know you could lay eggs, said Wilbur in amazement. Oh, sure, said the spider. I'm versatile. What does versatile mean? Full of eggs? asked Wilbur. Oh, certainly not, said Charlotte. Versatile means I can turn with ease from one thing to another. It means I don't have to limit my activities to spinning and trapping and stunts like that. Why don't you come with me to the fairgrounds and lay your eggs there, pleaded Wilbur. It would be wonderful fun. Charlotte gave her web a twitch and moodily watched it sway. I'm afraid not, she said. You don't know the first thing about egg laying, Wilbur. I can't arrange my family duties to suit the management of the county fair. When I get ready to lay eggs, I have to lay eggs, fair or no fair. However, I don't want you to worry about it. You might lose weight. We'll leave it this way. I'll come to the fair if I possibly can. Oh, good, said Wilbur. I knew you wouldn't forsake me just when I need you most. All that day, Wilbur stayed inside, taking life easy in the straw. Charlotte rested and ate a grasshopper. She knew that she couldn't help Wilbur much longer. In a few days, she would have to drop everything and build a, the beautiful little sack that would hold her eggs. All right. Stop right there. We'll pick up this next part tomorrow. And if you would please grab your reading, in, uh, your reading and grammar notebook. Okay. Grab this book, and we're going to turn back here past the reading section. We, we started writing about halfway through. I should probably put a little post-it note in here so I can find it a little easier. All right. So we're going to start. If you, if you have still some room on this page that you were supposed to write a story, so make sure you did that, um, you, can, you can write a little more on the bottom or you can go to the next page. All right, I'm gonna write today's date. 
to over here. Okay, so today is October 22nd, 2020. Okay, and we did chapters 14 and 15. Okay. All right, so first thing we're going to talk about is versatile. What does versatile mean? Remember in the book we just talked about versatile? What did that word mean? Okay, so if we remember it, it means easily able to move from one thing to another. That means you're versatile. So if I, um, if I have, you know, a lot of things to do, but I easily can go from doing this and now I'm going to do something completely opposite of that, um, that makes me a versatile person. Or if you have, you know, um, a tool that can do one thing, but you can also use it for something completely different, it's a versatile, for, versatile tool. All right, so make sure you pause right here and get this sentence written down, or this definition, I should say, um, this vocabulary word versatile and what it means. Get that written down. Go ahead and pause, and then when you come back, we'll get on to the next part. Okay, so the next part is, I want you to write, and, and I want you to write as much as you possibly can. Do you think animals can talk? Do you think that's real? They talked about how, you know, kids kids can probably hear that better than adults because adults aren't listening as as carefully um, as children do because they have so many thing, other things going on in their mind. So they might not even hear the animals talking anymore. So do you think animals can talk, really talk? What do you think? Why do you think that. That's the second question. And what that means is you're going to tell me whether you think animals can talk and why do you think they can talk? So if you say, yes, animals could talk because, and you tell me why, or no, I don't think animals can talk and this is why. So I want you to explain the why, um, whether you think they do or you think they don't. Either one. But just explain. All right, guys. So um, I'm going to have you do that writing. Some of this will be part of our finishing of our Charlotte's Web read aloud. So make sure you're doing your work in your notebook. Let me get back here. All right. So I hope you're enjoying the book. We're getting close to the end. Um, we are going to be on tomorrow. We're going to be on chapter 16. And I believe, I think there's 21 chapters here. Have a look. Uh, 22. Okay. So we've got about six chapters to go. Okay, and so we'll be finished with it before, um, before our Halloween celebration that we celebration day that we would have. So um, we're going to try to find some activities that we can do um, from home if possible. So um, I'll be sending more information about that. So don't worry about that till next week, but um, make sure you're getting everything written down in your notebook that we're doing together. And I will uh, see you in our math videos. Thank you.